ko sanggup uh, so uh, good evening welcome to the friday study circle and uh, um welcome so uh, i think uh, we can uh, start with the sharing so here we basically you know share the uh, whatever we have read during the week Uh, the words of Mother and Sri Aurobindo, and any other master or mystic, like anything that we resonated with. If we have questions on, like anything we want to share, but for just sheer joy of sharing. So thank you again for joining. And uh, um, uh, Jyotna ji, would you like to start? Uh, you said you've read a little something before coming in. A, li a little tiny something. Yeah. <clears throat> it's from the mother but is it not wo search mein dalna padega na ha but is it not <clears throat> the vital itself which finally is it not the vital itself which finally should take the decision to change it's a question yes yes <clears throat> i may assure you that the vital left to itself will never take the decision to be transformed it is quite satisfied with itself and over and above this being an accomplice of the mind the mind will furnish it with all the possible explanations for whatever it does people who live in their vital consciousness are even when they do not say so always very satisfied with themselves they are also very satisfied with all that happens to them and they always say of their impulses how interesting it is how interesting so if you wait for the vital to take the decision you may have to wait for a long time you must teach your vital that it must obey before feeling any satisfaction it must understand that it has nothing else to do but obey that is why i say that it is not very easy to begin the yoga if you are not sincere do not begin the body is very obedient truly it tries to do its best but it does not know whom to obey for generally it is not in direct contact with the higher being or the psychic impulses come to it directly from the mind or from the mind clothed with the vital and it does what they desire before the vital takes a decision and i have told you it is not very easy for it to take a decision a light must begin to dawn in the highest part of the mind a light which puts you in touch with a higher consciousness or with your psychic and it is upon this light that you must take your support to explain things to the mind to the vital and finally to the body i found this uh, this very beautiful in the context of the present condition of the world where all kinds of theories and all kinds of uh, explanations all kinds of dogmas are following the present uh, pandemic and people are so so uh, driven by the vital in giving their opinions and sticking to them that i thought this is very apt for us and we don't realize how nicely it is clothed and how the mind does the reasoning for the vital and then 
reality or we don't wait for light to come on shed on it or we don't try to go inwards to listen to the little spark of the psychic we just get driven by the vital and we give explanations so i liked it for that in fact two three people were arguing with me yesterday and then uh, i read this today and i said this is very apt i must send it i think there is also uh, what i see is that uh, there is a want to be somebody you know in each one of us that so whether it is a point of vaccination now that we take whether to take it not take it the opinion about it and ultimately if i am proven right i am somebody you know if somebody accepts my opinion i am somebody so and there as you were sh sharing that it is clothed in a you know how nice of opinion i have you know look listen to it <laughs> i am talking benefit of you so it takes that appearance and i don't realize uh, that i want to be somebody and if we can let go of that and recognize yes no i was trying to explain to those people supposed to be very learned and uh, quite well versed with mother's works also i was trying to explain to them that retain a certain a good degree of humility when you opine on a subject on which you are not an authority and you don't know the workings behind it none of us know the workings behind something so so profound but the vital is is so drunk in itself that it just wants to like you said it wants to um, uh, show its power really and seek recognition everywhere see i told you see so and so said see that person was wrong it comes like that yeah anyone else any reflections on this hi i had a, a reflection this this morning that it happened so we were planning to shift to our new home next week so when i had also taken leave and then it so happened that something happened in the family and we couldn't i mean we can't do this next week and it has to get postponed and i was so upset i was so terribly upset like uh, i was actually shocked about how much uh, anger is coming from within like i don't even know why because this is not something we can control i know but uh, it was uh, it was really this one uh, it was a uh, very strong then like towards the evening i started to realize and i was very irritated through the day and then towards the evening i started to realize that something is like wanting that to happen very badly and then uh, yeah it sort of doesn't happen if that sort of big push comes from inside and it just has to happen in its natural way i think it's beautiful that you were able to see this happening because most of the times we are not able to see you know we become that uh, up up or down whatever is going on i think this we had discussed last time in our sunday session also how to detect yes. a desire which we were reflecting upon yes so i think it's a beautiful test that uh, and it happens with all of us that we may do everything in good will let's you know change our house and good looking forward but then if it's not happening in our way we go down and if we are going down those of us who are doing the yoga you know uh, want to mother says that just know that then a mixture of desire has creeped in if the up and down is happening and if you can just take it like that okay not happening right now no matter then it's a different thing so but it takes i think all of us have our own <laughs> shares of blows before this <laughs> equanimity happens not that easy to achieve yeah 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 so and my dad kept saying you know you shouldn't get upset because of all these things and i'm like you like you have to let me process it <laughs> give me like an hour or two but you know unfortunately it took long time for her to come out of it then i told her don't stick to that situation maybe this is good 
this is happening for something you know some good is going to happen that is why all this is happening don't worry when i told her she couldn't take it no illa amma how can this happen this is the second time this is not happening she started yelling then i thought you know i should be silent but i could see her you know anger coming out so badly luckily i see after attending all these sessions it is very interesting that we are able to identify you know something is not good which is you know trying to pull us in you know to the bad uh, path but you know it was very very uh, nice that we are able to see and once we you know um, surrender this all these vital uh, impulse to the mother then automatically she pulls out very very beautifully then i she herself told in the evening mama i will go and write it to the mother because we have the practice of uh, writing to the mother every day night before going to bed all of us will write three of us so whatever mistakes whatever uh, good good things we have done uh, everything we will write so today she said amma i will go and write now itself so that i'll get some clarity so after writing the diary she became all right and she was so happy and we just meditated for some time and she was not ready and she came to the session you know it is very beautiful because of you know all these sessions we are and all the readings and all the sharings it is very nice to know it's really beautiful thank you all <laughs> i think there was one incidents in my own uh, late recent kind of uh, life where i was obsessively after one thing you know like just this should happen this should happen and there was one more realization there that if i want that to happen uh there is somewhere a promise that thing gives me that it will give me happiness it will make me more happy than i am right now right and i also have to see that if my happiness is so dependent on the other thing happening then the vice versa is also true which is right now i am in misery so can i question that why is it that right now i am in misery you uh, know can i just be okay and again you know one needs to process as you said you know you need needed your own time to process so to realize that no matter how glittery uh, the outer appearance may appear uh, nothing can ever provide us the lasting happiness it never has you know imagine that even if we logically look about this that okay Uh, having a new house will give me happiness you know okay so many people have just shifted in their new houses go to them and ask are they all happy you will find no you know they are not happy the second day something happens and sad again so even logically it does not make sense and this habit that you were sharing was really very beautiful you know to kind of share it with the mother everything that we go through yeah very powerful and uh, uh, monica i i want to ask some question see why do we need a processing time you know she said i need some time appa give me some time i need to process myself but why do we need that see we we know everything is happening for good then why should we get upset i think uh, to me it appears that everyone has their own soft spots what are soft spots to which i am attached okay so for you this area of changing the house may not be a soft spot so you are easily able to okay it doesn't happen doesn't have to <laughs> but yeah. for you for you some other thing may be a soft spot yes only you would know yes. there you would need the processing time so i feel that each one of us has uh, areas of inner work uh, which uh, we are more attached to those things or those persons in our life rather than to other other Uh, and there i think i feel that it's coming to me that uh, in those areas i need a little longer processing time yeah but anyone who wants to add on here yeah. i would say each person has his or her own processing time it is individual it's like the five fingers some people take a little longer to bounce back and as you go on the path and your journey 
you will find that your processing time reduces. But like Monica said, where your soft areas are or where your vulnerabilities are, you will take a while to process them in your head. It is normal, it is human. Until you reach a stage or a phase of equanimity and total inner calm where nothing phases you out, then you would probably not take it. But we are all, we are still on the journey. And uh, though I do, I would speak for myself, I do try very hard uh, to exercise um, a lot of experiments on myself. There are times when I do take a while. Like uh, even in a conversation with something inflammable, um, like I sometimes have a little uh, ratatat with my mother, you know, because uh, there are some, she knows my vulnerabilities and she may say something. And uh, uh, I, it has taken me two years to learn not to react. You know, to not answer back and not react and uh, not get phased by it and be very, very calm. Now I've come to a stage where I don't react at all, but it took two years to reduce the <laughs> processing time and come down. So there are certain, especially from your very near and dear ones, the hammer hits for rather a long time. That's, I would speak for myself. Yeah, um, because you know this, uh, I, I'm facing it almost every day. As you said, uh, Josna ji, when we face this from our very close people, near ones, dear ones, it is hitting very badly because I always have this problem with my sister. Whatever she says, it will hit me very badly. She used to tease me. Mama, you get upset when Parima says something. Otherwise, it's okay. Huh? It's okay, Parwala. We know. <laughs> we know about them. But then but then Meera can say, ask Meera can ask the question, Mama, why are you taking so much of processing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, when you said I understood, everyone has their own soft spots, ups and downs, some sensitive areas. So in the world, whoever says anything, I will not care. But if my sister tells me something, I will cry. <laughs> I understood now. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Any reflection to share? Taru, you wanted to unmute, I guess. But we stopped you. And blabber. I am not even unmuted. You are not supposed to know that that I was wanting to unmute. But thank you for the sensitivity. Yeah, when uh, Meera was so beautifully sharing, you know, I could just see, you know, how it's like we hear what we want to hear, right? No matter what anybody is saying. So what I heard was basically controlled, right? Like I believe that. I want to have a false sense of, con not false, it is false, but I don't know it, sense of control over my life, right? I had put so much time and energy into it. I had planned it perfectly. This is the day I'll do this. Then this is the time I'll do this. And then I'll do this and that and that. Like, you know, I have my life figured out. The I, the I, the I. So I believe that the more this I gets hit, you know, this stage when you want to say that it's all right, but nothing in you is feeling all right. And to sit with that thing that why I'm not, you know, what is happening, it shows you a lot. And for me, you know, that main control thing, that slap on my face was like, you know, when I was like indirectly hit by lightning and when my body was flying in the air, I mean, that's my last bodily memory, you know, that Think about, okay, so I don't control this, you know, like, so, okay, I can like now fall anyway. So just that, you know, that within that, I don't know how many seconds it was that upper, not upper, utter lack of absolutely control over my own body and what is going to happen to it was so beautiful that 
you know i thought i controlled you know i thought i have some whatever you know say in the matter of life and the truth is i don't and the more i see it again through various other laps or challenges or you know experiences and things i see i feel it really helps me in relaxing more right oh i don't have control you know then the stress can be diverted towards a comedy right oh see here again she is ready to get upset again she is following the same route of you know i wanted this way i wanted this way so it's a beautiful journey from and of course it takes effort right every time you have to say okay yeah you know feeling this but look at that side you know do you remember that kind of a thing so it's really nice and like you said it's beautiful to be able to see it so clearly because we become the frustration we become the anger and if we can see it there is something that sees that one wants to become and one is able to so you know and this control aspect that you just shared uh, you know we all want control that's the fact of our life and if i'm not wrong in mother's teachings only it's like uh, we actually want control and where we want control is the self mastery control over my movements you know that's what it has to be diverted so slowly as you shared we know that we don't control the outer things anything can happen any time it doesn't go my way as you were sharing but still this idea this habit of control doesn't go away you know even if i have a very strong experience of letting go we know how how hard it is in daily experiences to let go all of us have that experience that it's hard it's challenging so where to direct that energy which wants to control to have self mastery because that is the true control that okay something burnt outside and here as if nothing happened <laughs> easier said than done but yeah usually i also burn with it rise up in flames but you know that's where our journey has to go uh, it may take lifetimes doesn't matter but that's where the prana or the life force you know has to go so all of us want control but it has to be self mastery rather than mastering and slowly mother says you know like uh, mother and shurabindo they were shurabindo was directing the movements during the world war you know he had control over that and he had the mother ex, uh, the ex, very beautiful and very common commonly shared example of mother coming to his room uh, when it is stormy weather and seeing that oh my god like patta bhi nahi hil raha you know is kamre mein that is control so i think uh, yeah that's where energies have to go so yeah good he was totally unfazed yeah. he didn't even know there was a storm yeah beautiful yes Uh, so anyone else on uh, what josna ji had shared or what sarda ji had shared anything related or we can uh, proceed from here hi taru i missed the middle of it um, middle of the i got disconnected but um, talking about i think family and all, i think uh, <laughs> i now call them my play field so you know before um, certain family that i used to go to so i used to avoid them you know i used to get stressed out with them but now i think inter- i've done some internal work in the sense ke ab main jaati hu to main kehti hu chalo play field mein ja ke dekhte hain how my you know uh, personal growth has been so i think looking at it that perspective Uh, i'm more curious about how i what my what you know movements i have within me i think i'm more, so i think it's important to explore that too i'm not saying ke ja ke you know go do it yourself but even in a daily life i think um, as you grow spiritually your capacity to investigate or see those movements in yourself and to stay with them increases too that's the difference like pehle ek to i think when you 
I don't know, I think it, I, I don't know how to put it, but when you go into the depth of your own being, your capacity for nuisance increases too, and the, it doesn't impact you as much. Um, that makes sense. No, yeah, it, that's it been does make sense. Yeah. And there are times when it's just like uh, you just need something very small that puts you off. But then even for that, you know, the capacity to hold my own nuisance kind of, I think, I don't know, that's been my journey in the last few weeks. I feel, you know, that the, the sort of refuge, you only get it within yourself. And uh, yeah, that's it. I sorry. I really like what Monica was sharing about, you know, the need to be something when the information and I want I, I missed that, but I wanted to if somebody can summarize what she said. Okay, you know, in all these times we not ke koi sun le, to jase I we have that identification ke jase, with all this even COVID thing going on and with me personally I, I, something happened ke yaha pe my grandmother very helplessness at the first obviously which is true we have no control but at the same time I felt this need to be useful you know I saw that ego in different forms in a very under underlying that care love what I came across with what was the pain really coming from is the need of the ego to you know be useful to helpful to be again to be useful is another or, you know, way of trying to be something. So that was, um, just wanted to share my personal thing that I realized. And when I recognized that and I sat with it, I think that's what brought me relief eventually. So it wasn't ever about finding a solution <laughs> on the outside of figuring out the way to help them. I think it's a very interesting that you were able to see this need to be somebody because usually we are just, we are able to see this in other person. That's very interesting. No, ki ye kuch banna cha hai. <laughs> we are very, uh, very sharp at it, but we are not able to see it in our own self when we are trying to be somebody. And this happens, I have seen this happen mostly also in this uh, kind of, you know, this uh, when you are in a kind of a, what we call an intimate relationship with other other person or what you may call as love usually is just a masquerade that the ego is wearing that give me importance give me importance i think that's so strange because i don't even realize that i am doing that and i'm using the name love i am almost it's almost like polluting the name of love in the name of uh, give me attention, give me importance. And uh, as Jasmine, you were sharing that if one is able to recognize that, I think then it becomes a little easier to step back that, okay, if my it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Because there is, if, if I can step back from wanting to be somebody, I think there lies the true joy. Mother says that when we step back from the desire, there we touch true joy. Because when I'm wanting to be somebody, I'm acting from desire soul. And the more my wants are heard, the more the desire soul gets propagated, propagated. So I'm living more again and again. Okay, desire fulfilled. Okay, next one. So the desire soul is living. I am not living. And when I step back from the desire, from wanting to be somebody, okay, I don't want to be anybody. Doesn't matter. No. Then I step back into a no oneness, nothingness, which is the true self, where contentment lies without anything outward happening. So that's where Mother shares that it's true joy. You know, stepping back from desire is uh, true joy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That brings more clarity to it, and I think again don't take my words for like literally for it but what I that's the best way I can describe it is as you go within I think you realize the subtler again I don't know it's energy it's movement or something but uh, for like it's a good place to be in where I think I've um, 
I don't go automatically to what other person is doing. I see how it's all within me, how it's all my creation. That has been painful too because ab kisi ko blame karne ko nahi hai. But it's been empowering at the same time. And uh, I think last few, and I think mother's words and all, like you no, know, these sessions they really resonate at that level. But I think as you go within, you see the subtle, just like you know, background ke background me kya chupa hua, kya chupa hai, hua hua. So that's what it feels like. It comes out like you know the light. Uh, it it's very beautiful. Even the words you shared in the prayers and meditation, you know, it it feels like those words like shed light. That's how I personally. I think I'm a very visual person in that sense mentally. So I feel as if they're shedding light and you know light on those darker corners. And I can see that. कि वो जैसे वो पहले दिख नहीं रहा था गन तो अब वो छोटी छोटी चीजों में जैसे क्लेंजिंग हो रही हूँ दैट्स हाउ इट फील्स टू मी सो आई फील दोज लिटल लेयर्स आर कमिंग सो थैंक यू यू नो दिस रिमाइंड मी व्हाट यू जस्ट शेयर अनीता मूरजानी व्हेन शी हैड दिस नियर डेथ एक्सपीरियंस यू नो शी शेयर दैट एज इफ यू आर इन अ डार्क काइंड ऑफ अ गो डाउन एंड नथिंग इज विजिबल एंड सडनली दिस लाइट कम्स अप एंड नाउ एवरीथिंग अराउंड यू इज विजिबल you know uh, it's not that the stuff was not there already everything was there but now since the light of consciousness is there you are willing to see then everything she had said it in a different context but what you were sharing sounded really uh, kind of resonating that now that the light of consciousness is available to look within then more and more stuff is lit up so yeah more power to you yeah thank you thank you for sharing Yeah, I think uh, we can uh, move to the next sharing. So, anybody who would want to share next, kindly unmute and share. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, in the morning uh, some question came to my mind and uh, i was wondering and contemplating which path my mind intellect wishes to pursue the way uh, that leads me to the transitory objective world or the one that steers me the truth and liberation so uh, this thought was coming from the uh, in the childhood uh, when we start crawling then uh, that first time when you are eating the solid food at the time there is some ceremony so there the child goes uh, there are some uh, objects are kept in front of that by crawling and the child goes and catches that if the pain is kept there so the people say that okay he will be uh, you know going to the uh, is very intellectual so he will be a writer or you know he will go on the studies and things like that so some toys are kept there so likewise that was a then uh, like when we grow then in the school and uh, there uh, sometimes there is essay writing you write uh, what is your aim in life maybe in the local language or uh, mother tongue or uh, maybe in english so the, the subject comes uh, aim in life and the parents normally they try the child has to do this the doctor engineer this that and also some preparation of the starts but the fact remains uh, when uh, when i grow up then i start thinking the question actually what do i want so uh, i was reading life divine today so uh, the first chapter was the human aspiration so uh, i got a very nice uh, explanation by arsi uh, arvindo where uh, he has explained that what are the uh, or the process actually in this uh, life divine if you, uh, i'll just read this paragraph and in the internet in the network uh, thus the eternal paradox thus the eternal paradox yeah yes, yes. so uh, i'll just read uh, not the complete paragraph but 
first two sentence and the maybe one more sentence at the end. Thus, the eternal paradox and eternal truth of a divine life in an animal body, an immortal aspiration or a reality inhabiting a, a mortal tenement, a single and universal consciousness representing itself in limited minds and divided egos, a transcendent, indefinable, timeless, and spaceless being who alone renders time and space and cosmos possible. And in all this, the higher truth realizable by the lower term justify themselves to the deliberate reason as well as to the persistent instinct or intuition of mankind. Attempts are sometimes made to have done finally with questioning which have so often uh, been uh, declared insoluble by logical thought and to persuade men to limit their mental activities to the practical and immediate problems of their material existence in the universe. But, which, but such evasions are never permanent in their effect. Mankind returns from them with a more vehement impulse of inquiry or a, a more violent hunger for an immediate solution. By that hunger, mysticism profits and new religions arise to replace the old that have been destroyed or stripped of significance by skepticism, which itself could not satisfy because although its business was inquiry, it was unwilling sufficiently to inquire. And in that process, uh, uh, the uh, fear comes. And in the last part of this paragraph, to overcome this fear, and if there is any higher light of illuminate, illumined intuition of self-revealing truth, which is now in man either obstructed and inoperative or works with intermittent glancings as if from behind a veil or with occasional displays as of the northern lights in our material skies, then there also we need not fear to aspire. For it is likely that such is the next higher state of consciousness of which mind is only a form and veil, and through the splendors of that light may lie the path of our progressive and progressive self-enlargement into whatever highest state is humanity's ultimate resting place. So uh, when I was reading this uh, paragraph, it came to my mind that uh, it has been explained by Aravind that uh, Eternal paradox and eternal truth. So uh, this uh, in the in the mind always uh, this sort of uh, question arises, uh, the, which is the either uh, I'm trying for the paradox or the what is the eternal truth, as if both are uh, double mind. So uh, either confused like in the paradox or maybe what is the eternal truth in life. Uh, in the working life, we have not come across uh, actually what is this truth. Then uh, the immortal aspiration. Uh, every one of us uh, have that aspiration. Without aspiration, I think no, nobody can uh, survive this world from the beginning. But uh, that aspiration was also, uh, which is the true uh, aspiration. Uh, maybe I have not realized, uh, or maybe we in general may not have uh, realized from the beginning of our life. The presence of uh, universal consciousness in human being. So uh, the consciousness is already there. Uh, like uh, Monica, you were saying, uh, that there is a total darkness in the room and uh, consciousness appears and uh, it's suddenly everything is visible. It means everything is very clear now, which was as if it was not visible earlier. You know, that sort of that consciousness is there within me, but I, I, I never thought of it as, yes, I do possess, or I never uh, seen that how the true joy 
comes. The, so that I have never felt, and either it was explained to me uh, by the studies or the life which I have spent in that. So uh, uh, that the true joy, once I get the taste of it, actually, then probably that everything uh, will become uh, nothingless. Nothingness will come into it. Because nothing will stand in front of them. It's the true joy. So that experience we never had. And we limit our uh, mental activities to the practical and uh, immediate problems of the material existence in the universe. So we are very busy throughout day and night uh, with this material existence only. And uh, hardly the time we focus, I focus to get the, the, what I wanted, uh, what is my aspiration. And that was the main, actually, main subject. For that aspiration, what all I am doing? Am I, am I doing uh, sufficient? Am I moving forward? Or still, uh, where do I stand? So that sort of uh, uh, calculation or uh, guidance also I'm not getting. That yes, you are uh, like uh, Adi Shankaracharya, he was uh, early morning, he was taking bath in the Ganges and he was uh, uh, coming uh, after bath, he was walking down, he saw that old man is reading some Sanskrit grammar. Uh, and a very, very old person. He was uh, Panini's grammar, Sanskrit grammar he was reading. So then uh, he was thinking that it was such a useless uh, his, uh, time he is wasting on uh, understanding the Sanskrit rules and regulations which will not help him in any way in his life. So then uh, he, some uh, slokas came out from his mouth. There are 14 of them. So he called Mohamudgara. Mohamudgara means we are all uh, covered with moha. And uh, is it, that it, it is like a hammer. He says that you have, to, you have to hammer it out and then only probably our course of direction will change. Otherwise, unless, uh, unless there is one hammer uh, or uh, as a external force, uh, then uh, that suddenly uh, maybe the direction will change. So it has been seen that uh, those who have suffered in their life do something. So that is also acted like uh, Mudgar. Then only we have gone and change our uh, course of actions or course of course of the path to move in that particular direction. So, uh, and the last point, uh, uh, the last uh, two sentences of this paragraph, where it's still that uh, mm, there's not, not fear to aspire. Like uh, Ramakrishna Paramahams used to say in Bengali, that Lodja uh, Man Bhoy. There are three things, one is fear. So if, if these three are there and if you are moving in a particular path, uh, so uh, if this, any of these three or all the three are present, so we cannot achieve anything. So we are fearful from our birth actually to do or something not to do. Now then if I, if I don't succeed, then what will happen? Or something, a lot of, a lot of fear in our mind. We cannot become fearless. Whatever, whatever we have done uh, without fear and that we have achieved in our life. So, but that, uh, uh, this experience also uh, does not guide me every time. Maybe for the ego set scene or whatever may be the case. So uh, these are the various uh, thoughts which are coming for, uh, to uh, understand the human aspiration today. So thank you, thank you for sharing, Badanji. Uh, you said something, if I'm not, uh, if I've understood correctly, you said, uh, I have not tasted that joy. Yeah. How do you know that? Uh, because uh, the joy which I am having from uh, this normal material life, and that is very transient. So uh, if, if, if I have been asked that what was your uh, best day or best moment in your life, in so many years you have survived, you tell me what is the best moment. So I will not be able to uh, say anything immediately. But if uh, the true joy or uh, something, uh, something good, uh, which I have felt in my life, uh, that should be uh, permanently scratched in my mind so that uh, anytime anything is asked, I'll, I'll not forget that. So that is the true joy. The joy which is coming and going is very transient uh, for anything I wanted and I got it. After the more struggle I got it, so I remember for a few more days. So something like that. But uh, actual uh, uh, joy, 
that is true joy actually in my sense that if we, if we get that that will never forget and that will change that will change me totally totally probably the realized uh, realized souls those are the realized soul they must know about the experiences of the true joy which is uh, which you cannot forget throughout your life actually uh, i am confused a little here why because so it's like uh, me saying that here is divine and see i am able to experience the divine so this is true joy and see i have had the experience of true joy so i am actually wondering and a bit uh confused also that can this ever happen that here is the ego and it says i had it is it as if because joy or ananda you know when we talk about the true joy that you are talking of we talk about the divine divine himself is ananda divine himself is this lasting joy that uh, if i am not wrong you know that you are talking of now is it ever possible that i am able to say i had it so something which is maybe we can take for reflection because uh, not saying that i have something here more to say but doesn't make sense you know that ego can never say i had to joy uh yeah it, it will be it the person cannot say that yes i have the true joy uh, or the truth the joy but it will be perceived by others probably uh, that uh, this person uh, we have never seen yeah, but then before. the person would not be i believe the person would not be even concerned about the perception of the others you know so uh, what i am you know what i am why i am talking about this or maybe felt like talking about this this that uh, i we all you know we all have an impression of true joy otherwise we won't be seeking for it so uh, it's like you know the example that rupert spira shares here is that imagine that it's like a sponge ball that you have and you have compressed it so ego or egoistic state is like this compressed state of consciousness we don't e uneasy wait although we may be used to it but it's a little uneasy uncomfortable now i have a remembrance as a ball i have a remembrance of the relaxed state that's that impression i have i don't know where it is but it's there hmm? so all the time while i am there living as an ego limited uh, actually what i am cra craving for is this but the more i crave the more compressed i become <laughs> it's like almost a vicious loop i create that, oh i am not getting it not getting it not getting it you know so not getting it not there not there so that creates a perpetual compression and that's why we talk about letting go you know when we talk about say example for example i am passing over i'm i'm now on my deathbed so people say let go and so that you know now at least now i can have uh, you know such as experience if one can say so I, just random thoughts but yeah uh, just wanted to share them out here thank you thank you yeah anyone any reflection or anything to share नो ऑल्सो जैसे हम बात कर रहे थे ना कि मैंने तो वो कभी चखा नहीं है तो इट्स लाइक इमेजिन करो कि एक गुलाब जामुन है जो कैलकटा में मिलता है ठीक है सो उसका एक पूरा फॉर्म है उसका एक चाशनी है जो स्पेसिफिक तरीके की है तो नाउ आई कैन से दैट ओ मैंने तो वो कभी नहीं चखा क्यों मैं वो कह सकती हूँ क्योंकि उसकी एक पर्टिकुलर फॉर्म और शेप है नो इट्स लाइक डिफाइंड इट्स लिमिटेड नो आई कैन डिफाइन इट सो टू से बट वेन वी टॉक अबाउट this lasting peace or lasting joy or happiness can we ever define it that's my question that if i am saying that maine to kabhi nahi chakha iska matlab mere dimag mein kuch definition hai sorry to use hindi in between so uh, 
कुछ सम सम और द अदर डेफिनेशन आई हैव इन माय माइंड दैट ऐसे मिलेगा यू नो दिस इज हाउ इट वुड हैपन दिस इज हाउ इट वुड हैपन सो सो फार ऑल माय एक्सपीरियंसेस नॉट हैपन नॉट हैपन नॉट हैपन सो इट मींस आई एम स्टिकिंग टू अ डेफिनेशन ऑफ दैट ट्रू जॉय ऑफ इन माय माइंड इफ आई कैन काइंड ऑफ डिग एंड डिग आउट दैट डेफिनेशन एंड लेट गो ऑफ दैट डेफिनेशन आल्सो यू नो दैट लेट गो ऑफ इवन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ ट्रू जॉय एंड सी व्हाट हैपेंस so just i'm sorry if i i hope i have not confused you with my confusion i'm just <laughs> uh yeah reflecting with you here yes thank you no in fact uh, uh, what is in you know, those that realized so uh, all of them they they never said uh, you know uh, i felt like this or something and all they they never explained because yesterday i was saying that the, there was one i am forgetting the name of the person in the one video uh, in the net so he was with mother and all he was looking after the uh, school and things like that uh, he was ias officer only for one year he was uh, ias and all and then uh, he came to the ashram and all and he was uh, with the mother so uh, the questions were asked in the uh, this thing <clears throat> they got the experiences of he says that see i cannot i cannot explain because there is something uh i can say that yes uh, i experienced something but what i experienced you know that i cannot i cannot say you know something like that you are saying actually. and that everybody everybody says uh ramakrishna paramahamsa also he never he was explaining he says that there, there is one be that there is one uh, fort sort of thing and fort wall is there very high there is wall and the three friends they have gone there and uh, they wanted to see what is their other side of the fencing uh, so they they climb up one chap climbs up and all and he says ha 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 and jumps inside he doesn't come back then the second person goes so he also sees and he creates a sound oh i am very happy i am very happy and all he goes inside and he doesn't come back so the third one now decides what to do because whoever is going they are not coming back so this is something like uh, you know the realization of the god actually because uh, that is an explanation like, like this actually because the moment uh, they realize that he is not there he is not he will not be in a position to explain or he is not there one so another example he has given uh, like the uh, the toy made of salt goes to the to find the depth of the sea depth of the sea it goes there to measure but it it gets melted so that there is no uh, uh, existence there is no existence of the toy because it, it has already been dissolved in the water so uh, uh, so similarly something like that actually so that is actually the joy that is actually the joy which you are uh, trying to as if it may not be in a position to explain uh, the my ego or something and we not do the explain ego and uh, those who are doing the yoga and all probably uh, there some sort of uh, say like light or something sound or something uh, this thing comes realization some realization comes so that that proves that yes we are, we are moving in the right direction there was something like i uh, you know that professor he was he was saying uh, <laughs> study that you know uh, uh, what i am thinking that if uh, i can take over the school and all because as a librarian i am not in a position to do good thing and all if tomorrow or not so this thing and all and somebody was searching for him that mother has said that you take care of the uh, school you know the mother comes to know actually means you are already connected connected to mother and uh, your uh, actions are also being controlled by mother you know there they reach that stage it is not that in one day the things have taken place but yes so th- that was the thing actually uh, yeah the, yeah i think one marked uh, which we all need you know uh, if any realization has happened and many many realization may happen right but if my presence has not changed if the presence has not turned into a loving presence nothing has happened nothing has happened no matter 10000 spiritual realizations i may have so what we all need to cultivate is this transformation of our presence just like a flower doesn't need to say anything it it's you know fragrance oozes out 
so if i had many good you know intellectual realizations people have you know many siddhis one can have but if it is increasing my arrogance and not transforming my presence into a loving one nothing really has happened so that can be taken as a mark also yes yeah. can you explain more what is uh, the presence in the sense just very simple that if you go around that person you know if you are around that person or that uh, so because since badal ji was talking about this realization you know that true joy is there so then that person would be oozing out joy and sweetness also <laughs> it's not that you know it, you know a, a slap to people around and then inner joy too much too much <laughs> so that's not going to happen so it will be a very obvious gentleness or loving presence if any true realization deeper realization has happened and that is what i feel that for example with tenzing palmo you know we have this feeling that whenever we kind of you know we see her talking we see this lightness around her and you know gentleness sweetness that she want the benefit of all the people around so this just gentle loving presence nothing extraordinary and the thing is that we ignore it usually because this is <laughs> and if we re recollect back uh, we have many many people in our life if not many a few who have been in our life uh, like that a loving presence it's not possible that people have not touched our lives who were not loving in nature just kind gentle present uh, even if they were not intellectually oriented you know or not reading much of gita or scriptures just a simple loving presence kind compassionate presence yeah that's what was uh, i was hinting at it's hard to achieve <laughs> we all know you know we may really do the life divine in the morning i'm talking about myself or you know upanishad or ganga or whatever but when it comes to dealing with the immediate family you realize where you are how much water you know <laughs> yeah so we need to work upon that yes Uh, when uh, Badu Ji was sharing, you know what came to me was that, you know, when I say read or look at some, I don't know, like you were saying, Upanishad, Ganga, and stuff like the series or something, you know, when I look at Mira longing for Krishna, you know, there's something in me which says that I don't long that way. You know, I wish I longed for Krishna like that. So it's like when we look at the lives of masters and mystics. we feel there's something lacking in me right like like maybe the effort maybe the sincerity like i don't cry like that you know or i just cry when i want something otherwise i don't you know that honesty does come in and i think like we have so often discussed that everything is a helper everything is a bar right so i think that this satisfaction that you know i am not there somehow it pulls you forward right it wants you to be more like do more like long more it that it has that purpose and yet very well knowing that what we are talking about is not talkable not speakable not you know elaborateable not pointable and like you said like you know for everybody the experiences are different and we have all touched that space and yet because you know i have a certain image of how that space will look like it constrains me and i'd also read once that you know if you've had one experience which was really beyond somehow we keep craving for a similar experience and i think it was i don't know i think it was a mother who said no to experiences would ever be the same even for one person so we should never sit you know and say meditation that okay you know last time it happened this so now from the last 5 years you know i'm craving that let me have that stage again you know that's not kind of the way so I, again you know that vigilance that sincerity not to get caught into these things that yes i love that she longs like this and i would aspire i aspire to long that like that and yet for each there's their own journey to have that expansion and flexibility acceptance yeah no what you just shared taru uh, that 
whatever and as you said all of us have had at least one such deep experience that is a guarantee otherwise we would not be here today okay so now whenever that experience happened it was more of a happening it just happened but then as masters have said the ego pops up again and it says wow that was beautiful i wanted that <laughs> because ego is this incompleteness within us you know always craving always craving so now it says that oh that was beautiful i want to have it again as you said you know that so a want to repeat the same experience that's what we call running after pleasure you know although that experience was beyond anything but i term it into the same category my limited mind and i i run after it i run after it and in that running i actually evade the possibility of so many beautiful happenings on the way <laughs> that could have happened yeah and as masters have said we never step into the same river twice first because we are not the same person second the river is not the same as it was the last moment so yes so true yeah we often even, don't yeah. evade we miss it we don't realize it happened and it went and it happened but it had happened it's all retrospect then because we are expecting something else hi i want to reflect on what taru just said um i i was just wondering that i don't know i mean i i, I can hear from what you said that okay one second one second sorry um so i i wonder by just i don't know i mean i i can sense from what you said that that acceptance and everything should be there but a part of you also felt that i wish that my aspiration was what it's like what meera has for krishna and um me that to me right yeah and then uh, i i don't know if somehow that makes me feel like that would be such a disservice or that would be somewhat you know an uh, a dishonesty to who i who uh, or not true to who i am and even like a rejection of who i am at this moment and i can't feel like that can be something that would uh, you know th that would create such an inner conflict in a way if if i were to think of it this way for me personally it would create a um a space within me which which doesn't accept me fully which which again would be a would be a, a hindrance no to go further i uh, i just just want just wanted to share this because it's it's something i have probably heard and uh, just a moment okay but basically i think you get the gist of what i mean i i feel like we can begin from where we are so that part if we don't begin from where we are how can we go any further but for that the first step would be to be fully into where we are if that makes sense uh yes swati and i think i i thought i am kind of you know i, I touch the same space so basically when we look at someone or we hear somebody's story i feel you know something in me feels that i don't do that you know i don't aspire enough or i don't love enough i don't long enough and lot of us get stuck there and we start defining that okay he is a realized person and i am so 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 far you know like the what you said that you know we don't fully accept that ourselves that is a lot of our reality right like whenever i am sitting in that space wanting too long like meera yes i am in that space that i am not meera and i want to be so not saying that that's right or wrong but getting i mean if i'm having that feeling if it arises to know that you know that was one 
thing like that is like you know not to have you know we yeah. all don't have those charted paths that okay mine would be meera hers would be you know right right Anand, okay so i missed yeah. maybe i i mean yeah i think yeah that's what you touched upon i just i just uh uh yeah i i kind of missed a bit of it but i oh. i felt you shared that and i just wanted to clarify also yeah, and also felt like sharing this bit where it just maybe i haven't i don't remember if i've had felt that way but i just uh yeah it it would uh, it would feel very uncomfortable to feel that way is one thing that comes to mind yeah yeah and that would tell me that that's not the right place to be right that would be a beautiful indication that i need yeah yeah true yeah. i think uh, on the same lines i was talking to a friend uh, regarding discontent and that this you know krishna murthy also talks about preserving the discontent that if i am not discontented with my present state then i cannot walk ahead so there needs to be a little discontent like a pinch of salt that needs to be there but then we were talking that content also needs to be there at the same time because if there as you were sharing i think taru you touched upon it that if there is too much discontent you know then there is this continuous agitation in the being frustration annoyance you know irritation while at the same time i know the ground where i am standing i look the good parts okay this is good in me at the moment and i also see the ugly parts okay this is neat just like an artist does you know i i see the good parts in this picture and i also see the possibility of improvement i think that is the space where i would see myself kind of marching ahead that not to forget our goodness because we all have some or other goodness at the same time we don't have that much of aspiration maybe but we have many things which are you know commendable <laughs> not in sense of being proud but you know being grateful that i have these qualities or whatever and everyone has a unique combination of permutation and combination of qualities so also to parallelly make a list of that especially for those of us who don't make you know some of us are maybe too much into their good qualities then they may, may need to make a list of their bad ones but some of us are too much into this is lacking this is lacking so then for me the list that is required to be made is okay what is good in me you know what is the beautiful parts in me that are there by the grace of god so i think there need to be this a balance of an artist one can say because since life as we say is art you know so in art we need to notice also the beauty and along with that the point where i need to work more you know the points of improvement yeah so content and discontent at the same time yeah just wanted to yeah add on so i had a dream i want to share it with you <laughs> so there was this uh, there's a friend i know uh, a, quite a close friend i have been uh, we have been friends for a long time um so uh, to her i have been saying for a very long time that uh, for a moment stop focusing on what you're lacking and you already have so much goodness spread it out spread it out you know so this has been my mantra kind of a japa to her for a long time now i had a dream about her that i am in her house and she has made a lot of food like the breakfast is ready the lunch time is ready the dinner time is ready everything is ready and when i come to him come to her and she is serving me i am still hungry so i i can't feel that i am content now okay i had enough food then i go to her kitchen and i see oh my god stacks of puris are lying there and then i look at her in a kind of a surprise i'm like what are you doing because you have so much of food who are you kill <laughs> you know you are going to feed this to why are you, why are you not feeding the person who is right here and then i shared this dream with her and i told her disclaimer take it with a pinch of salt dream is a dream after all but the symbolic meaning it carried for me was that i already see so much of goodness in her already 
no she may know that i am not good enough i am not good enough for this or that work but i already since i know her for a long time i see that goodness in her already and i have been asking her ki spill this goodness out you know go out and interact with more people and maybe give yourself to some good work and spill this goodness out so for me it was a symbolic meaning that she already has the stacks of goodness with which she can feed those who are in need but she is not allowing herself to you know and the people who are meeting are still hungry <laughs> although she has stacked up food inside the kitchen i think if, uh, and that i can say for for all of us who feel that i'm not good enough i'm not good enough to say that we are we are all good enough for some or the little as mother says not to be too modest about what you are good at and not to be too humble not to be too proud but do whatever little you can do in whatever you can you are good at so to start from there and we all are good at something or the other all of us so not to ignore that yeah so any uh, last comments or we can also i don't know wind up here okay no news is good news <laughs> so okay so thank you everyone for is it okay taru shall we close yeah yeah hmm okay joshna ji i think wanted to say something yeah yeah please yeah please oh, okay. no no i was going to say my goodbyes okay <laughs> today okay, i was then. actually just before we started i was re reading seeing a visual it was very interesting everybody must be knowing kevin costner and uh, whitney houston and she used to always feel that she was not good enough she was never good enough in anything she always felt a sense of incompleteness and unfulfilled though she was a very beautiful human being and kevin said that but i was when i was turning producer i was convinced that she would suit the role and nobody else and she was so so good and so uh, he waited for a couple of years and then uh, on a, she went on a rebel trip because she thought she was not good enough and she went on a world tour he still waited and then finally convinced her and she did bodyguard which was her epic thing and she says after that during that filming and even after that she felt maybe i could be good enough you know and um, uh, when um, she died at 47 so when he was asked to speak at her funeral even there he very distinctly and clearly said uh, if only i could tell her that she was not just good enough but she was great and she was far beyond what she thought she was when you said that your dream you know and you were trying to tell your friend i remember that was just 5 minutes before we started very interesting that people think that though we each one has a quality i yeah. think we are not beautiful yeah good example yes and think... it was such an epic movie had she not done it we would have missed something in life Okay, we have not watched it. Taru, have we? No, not hmm. bodyguard. No, no. Next oh God, see it. on Netflix, the next start <laughs> to do list bodyguard. It's not on Netflix, <laughs> unfortunately. Amazon Prime. उसपे मिलेगा? No, नहीं. Oh. Actually, I I remember coming across this as well. What Jyotna ji just said, and uh, of course, I think everyone would have at least heard the song uh, that was made for this movie. You know, that uh, was it. Uh, Look how far we've. Uh, uh, I'll always love you. I will always love you. 
and I that that song. So yeah, it was part of the movie. But anyway, she's she was brilliant, and yeah, it's a good example. I just uh, there's one more thing that just comes to mind from this aspect of not good enough. I feel at least growing up, I know that maybe culturally there's a conditioning in um, to to look to look at ourselves in a different light, you know. Um, um, perhaps uh, there there seems to be this conditioning of uh, looking at faults more, looking at the you know glass half empty, just just those things are there, and then. For me, it doesn't fit with, uh, I mean, the awe that one feels about how how incredible life is, how miraculous things are, and that we are part of it. You know, as they say, that you're part of the stardust. You're just, you're, you know, you're part of that. So for me, I think the starting point of that realization, you know, I mean, anything else, if I were to look at myself and consider myself anything less, I, I am. It in a way for me, it feels like, who, what kind of, like, who can do this? Like, how can I judge something that's so beautiful? And like, I'm, by by looking at me as anything less, I'm judging this miraculous thing as something to have created something less, a lesser being. I can't, you know. And that made me look at things differently. So I'm, I'm familiar with this looking at myself at a you know putting oneself down aspect and then just from this from this aspect this journey i feel like the big beginning point is be a part of something you know i mean even from mother and shirobin those writings it's like this is the divine expressing itself so you know we are bits and pieces, little bit teeny tiny, whatever. But it's still an expression of the divine, and I, yeah, I refuse to look at it as anything. Mm, yeah, just good enough. I look at it. I mean, not that I feel great about myself all the time. I, I see my flaws, obviously, are like full of them, and I focus on them sometimes a little too much. But at the same time, there's a baseline feeling which, yeah, which doesn't allow for going into this space which we just talked of yeah 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 i think this famous example of mother you know some disciple asking mother uh, about plane crashes, we may have shared that, right? Uh, that mother, why is it that some people are gone in a plane crash and some are saved by divine grace? And then mother says, how stupid is that question? Not exactly the words, but <laughs> she says, how dumb is that? To that only. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, you every day, thousands of planes are flying without crashing. Their divine grace is not there. And now when plane has crashed, there some are left and some are by divine grace so it's really amazing and yeah yeah it's a living miracle i think albert einstein also said that every moment almost in those lines that we keep on missing the miracles in in a want to something have something more you know, something more and in it amazing the paradox is that the more i become closer to the present miracle I also get the something more. <laughs> yeah. So may all of us get the something more. If may there... all of us be uh, have the ability to recognize the something more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that we got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Taru, kare. Okay. Thank you, everyone. For joining. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you and Thank good you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kabir. Thank you for joining, Kabir. Bye. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.